Poker, the quintessential gambling game and one of my personal favorites. Almost everyone has heard of poker, and I'm sure that anyone who gambles has dipped their toes into playing hands and throwing chips. Whether you have, or even if you haven't, Bellatro is definitely a game to add to your Steam cart. Bellatro is a poker roguelike that has skyrocketed in popularity since its release at the end of February. But why has it blown up as much as it has? What took this small indie game to legendary status in the gaming sphere? Well, to understand that, you need to know what Bellatro is first. Now, what exactly is a poker roguelike? I mean, the poker part's pretty obvious. It's just the classic card game that we all know and love with a few modifications. You play a five card hand and based on what's in the hand, you score with certain combinations, like a two pair, full house, straight, or even four of a kind. Unlike real life poker though, Bellatro is primarily a single player game. So the game turns getting chips and betting money into some sort of scoring system. Each scoring hand gives you a base amount of chips, plus some for each card that's played, multiplied by a base multiplier. The interesting part of Bellatro though, comes from the roguelike aspect. See, you play against blinds in Bellatro, which reward you with money when you hit the score gold. This money can be spent in shops for various different items. These shops are a staple of the roguelike genre, some games of which I've explored myself on the channel, like Backpack Hero and Dicey Dungeons. Others, like Hades and The Binding of Isaac, have reached critical acclaim, but these games follow more or less the same format. Play the game, die, unlock new skills and features, repeat. For example, as you continue playing Dicey Dungeons, you unlock new characters and harder side quests with different mechanics. The more you play Hades, the more you can unlock from the mirror and the various NPCs you can talk to. The more you play Bellatro, the more you can unlock Jokers. Jokers are cards that you can hold that have special effects. You can have the normal Joker, which only gives you a plus 4 to your multiplier, the Scholar Joker, which gives you 20 extra chips and 4 multiplier every time you play an Ace, the Misprint, which can give you a random multiplier, or nothing at all. There are many other Jokers in the game, not even mentioning the ones that depend on modified cards in your deck or on random chance or even multiplying the multiplier before multiplying the chips. The game also has consumables that you can buy, extra cards that can modify your deck, your base score for the hands you play, and even the jokers that you're holding. But of course, being consumables can only be used once. The shop has other things that you can buy as well. There are vouchers, upgrades that improve certain aspects of the run permanently, and card packs, exactly like opening a pack of your favorite trading cards. There are five different types of packs three of which are the consumable cards that I mentioned earlier, and it's always so fun opening a pack to see if you can find what you're looking for for a specific run or build. Couple that with the interesting Joker mechanics and consistent card theming and everything, it's easy to see why the game has had so many eyes on it recently. Bellatra also hits a lot of flags that other famous roguelikes hit, like Hades. There are a bunch of different starting tools for the player to take and run with, there are many different boons and perks you can get from completing rounds or rooms. These perks have so many different synergies to explore, and you can unlock everything by just playing the game. Alatro doesn't just only have these qualities though. The jokers and spectral cards have amazing designs, and the art in the game is just stellar pixel art across every corner. The special additions the jokers can have are even more alluring. I mean, just look at this negative hallucination joker. Just the wonders of digital art, my friends. Wow. But besides the art, there's one aspect of Bellatro that captures the human spirit like no other. Big numbers. Huge numbers even. Watching your combo pop off and getting thousands, millions, even billions of points is one of the most satisfying things in this world. Just listen to a standard mid-game hand. You can see why this game is so highly regarded. And it's not that hard to get your points in the millions. Heck, you need at least 100,000 points just to beat the game, and even over 500,000 if you get unlucky. But the game doesn't end there. After you beat the game, you can still keep going for as long as your build allows you, letting you explore and experiment and giving you a goal to get past that isn't just beating the game for the first time. All these factors play into why so many people, including myself, have been enjoying Bellatro so much, and honestly, no one can blame them. But what does this all have to do with its spike in popularity? Bellatro has been covered left and right by a variety of YouTubers for seemingly no reason. While it's a game that's based on a famous card game that is relatively simple to understand, it is still an indie game made by a smaller studio. 
As much as there is love, sweat, and tears that went into making this game, the fact of the matter is that the game, the genre, the very essence of this work of art could have faded into obscurity under the wrong circumstances. So how are they right? Well, it helps that the game was built around one of the most iconic and famous card games that has ever been played. Besides that, Bellatro is a beautifully designed game, from the integration of poker with the replayability of the roguelike genre, to the effort that went into the art and music and sound design, and ultimately, the way it fulfills our urge to see a number go up. These factors, considering the perplexingly fast-paced nature of the game, lead to the game being great for content. Audiences like watching interesting gameplay and decision making. And one of the biggest reasons why Bellatro hits it out of the park is because of the numbers you can obtain. Millions of people want to see how high you can get the numbers with this Joker combination, that Joker combination, or maybe even this Joker combination. Which by the way, is the best way to get to the maximum score. However, there's one last thing you can't forget about virality like this. Luck. Luck plays an important role in the success of any game, but Latro is very much included. At the end of the day, even a masterfully designed game could very well just fall through the cracks of today's day and age, especially an indie game like Bellatro. There was some good modicum of luck that went into making Bellatro as popular as it is, and no one can deny it. But just looking at the game itself, it's easy to say it definitely lives up to the hype. So what does that mean for the end of this video? Well, if you were looking for a recommendation to go out and try one of the most popular games on Steam right now, you've got mine. Bellatro is an extremely engaging and interactive way of playing poker that has never been experienced by the online world before. I'd highly recommend you pick it up full price or on sale. I guarantee you will not regret it. And at the end of the day, that's just one man's opinion. If you agree with me, please feel free to hit that like button, hit that subscribe and that share button and comment down below what you think of Bellatro or if this video made you want to give it a shot. Other than that, I've been Will and I'll see you all later.